Hello, in today's episode, we're going to cover possibly the most critical element of candle making, and that is selecting the right wick. It plays so many roles, so we'll cover that, and we'll talk about what you should do in the next candle you make to be as successful as possible. Hello, my name is Kevin from Armitage Candle Company, the premier online resource for accelerating your candle making technique and business. In today's episode, we're going to cover basic wick theory, so let's dive in. Wick selection is the end game. If you can figure out how to select the perfect wick for your candles every time, you will quickly become a millionaire because I tell you what, this skill is invaluable. And wick design is single handedly the hardest aspect of candle making. Putting together a bombastic fragrance blend, it requires good taste, but it doesn't require incredible technical know how. Melting down your wax and controlling your temperatures is incredibly important, but when you're eventually in it, it's not that difficult to steer and tune over time. However, picking a wick for your candle that performs well and passes a safety test is where you'll spend most of your time. They say it takes 10,000 hours to master a certain skill, and I guarantee you're going to spend at least 9,999 of those hours scratching your head over which wick to use. That's really the truth. So let's cover wicks at a really high level. Well, in a candle, the first thing that happens is you light your wick and the fire on the top melts the wax below. That wax becomes a liquid pool, which we creatively call the melt pool because it's melted wax. And that liquid wax is drawn up through the wick, up into the wick via capillary action. This is like magical science. And the amount of wax that is drawn through depends on not only the wick type and size, but also the wax blend properties. Some waxes are a little more difficult to get through that wick, and some are a little bit easier. Soy, being dense, being viscous, takes a little bit more than paraffin, which is a little bit lighter, a little less dense. And then that melted wax, which is a liquid at this point, it saturates the wick. It literally sits in the wick as a liquid, and up by the flame, it heats into a vapor, so it starts to become a gas. And that's when it, be, when it ignites as fuel in the flame. How do you know if you've selected the right wick? We'll cover more of this later, and we've touched on this in other episodes, but the only way to really know if you have the right wick is to burn test the candle. There's no way to actually know if you have the right wick except through testing. Unfortunately, you can't just deduce that, heck, I've got the greatest wick ever based on your opinion. You have to burn test that candle. And I don't mean every single candle, I mean the candle design. But keep in mind that everything we do as candle makers is try to create useful starting points for new and existing designs. Right? There's no definitive answer. And if you're in this craft and in this hobby or in this business because you like having this scientific, I can figure out exactly what's wick if I just use math or if I just think about it long enough, unfortunately, that's not the truth. But with your experience and with your time and with what you've seen, really you get better at creating starting points. And that's what wick charts are too. They are starting points. They are not definitive. If you've hung your hat on one as the truth, you've probably left disappointed. But candle design is largely iterative. Meaning as we test these new designs, we're gonna build a body of data. This is feedback. This is experience. And it drives the next decision you make in the delivery of your candle. Testing candles is a huge part of feedback, and that's what you're making immediately to that design. But over time, when you try a new series, or you try new wax, or you try new containers, you can draw upon all this feedback of the past to try to help you make a decision about what to do to make an even more useful starting point than the last one. Making candles at home doesn't always mean we have to hold our work to the same standard. A small business might hold a much higher standard. But those standards are good markers for the quality of our work. So wick testing. Most of the time, your quest to build a good candle comes down to selecting the right wick. Yes, fragrance oil affects it. Yes, container affects it. Yes, wax affects it. But at the end of the day, the wick has the largest responsibility in a candle. It's regulating the melt rate. It's regulating the temperature of the melt pool. It needs to make sure that enough liquid gets up to the wax to balance the combustion. It needs to properly throw the wax and the fragrance without burning off those high notes. It plays so many roles, it's so easy to pick the wrong wick, and it's much 
a much smaller window of success for selecting the right wick. So you're going to spend most of your time here, 9,999 hours if you're doing it right. So when you say burn testing, you can also pretty much just say this is wick testing because really that's what you're doing. When you need to make a correction, you don't just change the wax. You typically change the wick. That's the adjustment that you make, whether you wick up or wick down or add more or remove some. It's all wick adjustments at that point. And although everything added to a candle impacts everything added to a candle, I say that all the time, we steer the ship more with wick selection than with most anything else. So that's all I have today. It's quick and dirty. It's just a little bit about basic wick theory. And I hope it gets you going or motivates you or shows you, hey, you know, all these struggles I've had with finding the right wick, I'm not alone. Because guess what? It's normal. And if you're not spending most of your time selecting wicks, then it's possible that you're taking shortcuts. And shortcuts are, they add up. They're not worth it. So make sure when you select a wick, make sure you test it. You follow all the standards. We talk about that extensively here. There's other great channels for that too. But spending your time looking at wicks, it's not the worst thing. It's actually a really good thing. It means you're probably doing something right. So I hope you found this useful. If you did, give it a like. If not, or if you have any questions, just leave me a comment. I'll respond when I can, and I will see you in the next episode. Bye.